Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.1 beta three iOS 17.1 beta three is available to developers now and iOS 17.1 public beta three will probably be out by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. Now this came in at a fairly small 636.1 megabytes. That's on my 15 pro max, but it varies depending on device between about five and 600 megabytes. This was released alongside a lot of other updates, the typical beta updates for iPad OS 17.1 beta three watch OS 10.1 beta three, but also a public release that we didn't expect. Apple released iOS 16.7.1. And what's unique about this is it's not only available for iPhone 8, 8 plus and iPhone 10, but also devices that haven't updated yet to iOS 17. So my iPhone 11 pro max actually has the update, but there's no files to downgrade to it. If you've already updated to iOS 17. So if you'd like a separate video on that, let me know in the comments below as this is available now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about as you can see the build number is 21B5066A and as we have an A at the end it means we're very close to a final build. We could see the RC next with a final release maybe within a week or two. So we'll talk about that a little bit later and this particular update does not have a modem update. I didn't see anything for the iPhone 15 series or anything else. However, there are some changes and updates in it. And the first one has to do with an issue that some had reported in France with the iPhone 12 emitting more RF radiation than it should. Apple's actually addressed that in this particular update. And you can see that on the website. I'll link this in the description, but it says understanding iPhone 12 and SAR testing in France. It is important for all iPhone 12 users in France and around the world to know that iPhone 12 is safe to use and always has been. They go into more information as to how they actually tested this. And you'll see down at the bottom, it says iOS 17.1 includes an update for iPhone 12 for users in France to accommodate this specific test protocol that requires reduced power when off body on a static surface iPhone 12 will no longer increase the allowed power when the off body state is detected, such as while it is sitting on a table. So it uses the proximity sensor to detect this and lowers the overall frequency that it's pushing out as far as the power. So that's something that they've updated and typically they have to be within regulation for all countries. So there may have been an odd issue there with iPhone 12. Now the updated battery icon in the upper right, that's something we saw before. I can show you on a different phone. On the left, we have beta two on the right, we have beta three and they change the battery icon back to where it's more rounded on the left hand side. So that's something they've improved. We thought it was a bug before as it just didn't look right overall with the iPhone 15 pro and iPhone 15 pro max models. They've actually updated the action button so that it's less reactive when it's in your pocket. It actually uses the proximity sensors to know what's in your pocket. Maybe some of the motion sensors as well, and will make the action button take a little bit longer to have activate whatever you have it set for. So if I press and hold, you'll see, I actually have it set for my flashlight and this can take a little bit longer. I tested this out, put it in my pocket, left it for about 30 seconds, then went and pressed the button on the outside of my pocket. And it took a little bit longer to activate. So it seems like it's actually reactive to that. However, it's hard to actually time as it seems like it's a half a second, maybe a second difference. Also, if we go into the watch app and you go to add a new watch or set up an Apple watch, the graphics here for the different watch faces have been updated with iOS 17. So you have the latest one for the ultra series, and then you have Snoopy, and your different one here for palette. So those have been updated small changes, but that's, what's been updated. There's also some changes in the code to different wording throughout, but not a ton of things, but there are some bug fixes worth noting. So if we go into the feedback app and within the release notes, you'll see, we have some known issues. There's actually four known issues, which is down from 10 of last time and four resolved issues, which is up from three with beta two. The first known issue says repeatedly entering cinematic mode or switching between front and rear facing cameras in cinematic mode on iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 pro might cause the preview to freeze for a couple of seconds. So that's a known issue, but they have fixed power consumption with watch OS. So that was an issue with watch OS 10.1. And it says increased power consumption might occur when an Apple watch running watch OS 10.1 is paired with an iPhone with iOS 17.0 or watch OS 10.0 is paired with 17.1. So they've actually fixed this. So it should really fix the issues people were having with Apple watch. That was a big bug for a lot of people and that should be resolved. They've also fixed an issue with widgets. That's something they mentioned before the SKA or SK ad network, the store kit, 
Wallet and Apple Pay have been resolved as well with a few different things. So if you're having issues with that, make sure that you're updated with Beta 3. And again, there's that note with the iPhone 12 in France. Now, as far as bug fixes, that's all we know about so far. We do know that they've fixed an issue when you swipe down the notification center, maybe change screens. It was very laggy. It seems to be fixed with beta two, but with beta three, there's no change there. I still do have the notification bug. It's not showing here. Maybe I still have some notifications on the other phone, but it seems to lag quite a bit. And this one also has beta three on it. So you'll see there, it just sort of jumps around. So that's still an issue. There's also an issue with a black screen or a reboot at night and Wi-Fi issues. Now this could be still on iOS 17.0.3 or beta two. We don't know if they fixed that in this update, but it could mean we have an update coming soon. We'll talk about that in a moment, but as far as bugs and bug fixes, that seems to be everything. Performance wise, it seems to be pretty good. I have it running on an iPhone 11 here, going into different apps, whether it's Minecraft, going into music, going back out, things seem to be nice and fast. And the same is true with ProMotion. Of course, it will take a few days to know if anything slows down and we'll get back on that with the weekend follow-up as well. But so far it seems to be nice and fast. Additionally, the heat seems to be in control. It's nice and cool. It's still cool to the touch and the benchmarks actually show performance is quite good as well. I'll show you that in a moment, but in general, it's nice and fast and smooth and staying cool. As far as battery life, if we go into settings, we'll go down to battery, battery health and charging. I'm at 100%. This is the latest iPhone 15 plus I've been testing and my battery hasn't been incredible. It's been better as I've been optimizing the overall settings, but I'll probably switch back to the 15 pro max and probably completely wipe it and start over as I can't get this to stop using things such as Safari. For some reason, it shows 23% of activity used. Some of this just doesn't make sense. And if I go to show activity, it says 39 minutes. I've hardly used Safari. But today, so far, I have three hours and 37 minutes of screen on time, two hours and 29 minutes of screen off time, and I've used about 50% of my battery. Yesterday, I had four hours and 28 minutes of screen on time and used 75%. I think this should be much better, and hopefully I can optimize that by fully wiping the phone when I switch back after testing this one. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1 beta three, if you're on any of the betas, absolutely. It will resolve issues with things like wallet, your battery life on your Apple watch and things like that. So I would definitely install it for that reason. If you want to try out the new features, such as the standby options from beta two, you could do that, but I don't know that I'd run out and install this since we'll probably have it released to the public very soon. And speaking of public releases, we could expect possibly iOS 17.0.4. The reason I say that is the Wi-Fi issues and maybe the black screen at night and reboot problem people are having. They could resolve that this week, or they could just wait until iOS 17.1 is out. Since we're getting a new beta every week, I would expect iOS 17.1 beta four, or maybe even the release candidate as soon as next week. We know that watchOS 10.1 is coming out before the end of the month with that new double tap feature. So based on that, maybe we'll have it on the 23rd or the 30th with the final release. That makes a lot of sense to me. We know they're already testing iOS 17.4. So all the way up to that with 17.2 and 17.3. So we could definitely see this on a fast pace. Now, as far as the overall benchmarks, they're scoring quite well. So you'll see, I ran these today. I had 2,897 for single core, 7,161 for multi-core. So that's actually quite good. And I haven't seen 7,000 since, well, iOS 17.0.2. So it's actually doing much better than we had before. And like I said, performance seems to be nice and fast. So that's everything so far with iOS 17.1 beta three. If I find anything else, of course, I'll share it in the weekend follow-up video. Let me know if you found anything else as well in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.